I've had a lot of people ask me what happens if a gang leader or a shot caller, as they're known in prison, asks you to put some work in. I think Big Herc did a video on this too. So, I had a cellmate in the maximum security jail, Phoenix, Arizona, Madison Street Jail, back in 2004. Real old school, independent, tough guy. And he told me a lot of stories about the Aryan Brotherhood and shot callers. So one story that came to mind, he said back in Cimarron Unit, Tucson Prison, 1994, there were three probates on the yard. Now probates are young people looking to put work in for the gang, earn their stripes, earn their tats, and rise up and become full gang members. So their names were Henry, Roy, and Nate. Now on this yard, there were about 300 white prisoners and 13 Aryan brothers. So Nate found out that his cellmate was a chomo, child molester. So he got the green light from the shot caller to smash the chomo because he thought by putting that work in, it would help him rise up in the gang. So the shot caller told him, don't kill the dude, just smash him and make the chomo roll up. That means you gotta tell the guy to roll all his belongings up in his mattress and get the hell off the yard. So they timed it and Roy and Henry were keeping point at the door, which means they were working as lookouts for the guards. So Nate smashed the chomo two times, punched him in the back of the head, really hard. The chomo fell down, banged his head and died. So now they're like, whoa, what are we gonna do? So they took the corpse, put it on the bunk and left it there and the guards didn't notice for three days. Eventually the guards came in, lifted the sheet and saw this stunk and bloated corpse. And next thing, the whole prison got locked down. Now, somebody snitched, yep. And the probates and the Aryan brothers, the 13 Aryan brothers, were removed from the yard and put into a lockdown facility pending an investigation. In the end, all three were facing the death penalty, all three probates. So Henry and Roy agreed to cooperate against Nate and Roy was even Nate's stepbrother. But facing the death penalty, he, he agreed to cooperate to snitch against Nate. So the prosecutor then said, look, I've got two witnesses. You sure you want to take this to trial? Why don't you just sign a plea bargain for 25 years to life and you won't get the death penalty? So Nate said, hell no, ain't going to do that. I'm going to take this all away. And he took it to trial. Nate was actually acquitted at trial. He beat the case. Roy and Henry ended up in protective custody, so the Aryan Brotherhood, they hoped, wouldn't be able to kill them. Now, after Nate beat the case, he came back onto the yard, and the Aryan Brotherhood, the shot caller, offered to patch him in, which means get your full tattoo to be a full-fledged Aryan Brother gang member. And Nate's response was, Fuck you guys and your patch. I ain't getting patched in. Now, to disrespect a shot call like that is a kamikaze move. It's suicidal. So Nate was in the chow hall and his food came and he bit into it. And there was a hypodermic needle in his food tainted with hepatitis C. Someone's blood from shooting up and hepatitis C. Yeah. He got hepatitis C, which can slowly kill you by eating your liver up. And he sued the prison and he got awarded 200,000 in compensation. Eventually, Roy and Henry, because they thought they weren't even safe in protective custody, they moved them out of the state to other prisons. And Nate himself ended up in protective custody to, in the hope that he wouldn't get killed by the Aaron Brotherhood. So these guys come in, click up with the gang, put in work for the shot callers. They think it's cool to become full gang members. 
But these gangs, it's blood in, blood out. They use people up, they brutalize them. So keep your day jobs, folks. Don't get gangster writers. Now, that's a good story to, you know, about what happens with shot callers and putting work in. People have asked, did I have to put any work in for shot callers? Now, when you first go into the jail, you're so scared of all the gang rules and you, you know, you kind of like think you've got to do everything that they say or else you're going to get smashed. It takes years to learn, to make the right alliances, the right people, and to play around the system and play around the gang rules and the guards rules. So when I first went into Arizona jail, I was in the Maricopa County jail for 26 months. Hardcore gangs in the racially divided whites, blacks, Mexican Americans, erring brotherhood shot callers decided who lived and died in there. So one day some dude comes in, they put him in my cell. The gang leader in my building said, hey, you need to tell that guy to roll up because he's got, we got an issue with him. I can't remember whether they thought he was a snitch or they thought he was a chomo or whatever it was. Now, when a gang leader tells you to tell your cellmate to roll up, your cellmate has the right to fight you to stay in the cell. He'll say, look, this guy told me to roll up, I smashed him. I earned the right to stay in the cell. So at this point, I can either not do what the gang say and I'll risk them smashing me or tell my cellmate to roll up and risk a fight with him. So I took my chance on telling my cellmate to roll up and he must have knew what he'd done. He must have known he was in some kind of deep shit with the gang and he didn't fight for his right to stay in the cell. He just rolled all of his belongings up, went downstairs, tapped on the plexiglass to the guards and told him he needed to get out there, his life was in danger. And I never got any trouble for that because I just said, you know, words come down, you need to roll up. So he didn't snitch me out, he just went on his way. Um, there was another time, however, in the early months of my arrest as well, when I still hadn't learned how to navigate the system properly, my story was published in a newspaper, front cover, English Sean's Evil Empire, 10 pages long, everything I did in 10 times more, they portray me to be a cross between Walter White and a vampire. So, the gang got wind of this because the, the, the guards actually started putting this newspaper story on the notice board in medical. People were reading it, you know, talking about how I was going up against Sammy the Bull, I had this multi-million dollar ecstasy ring, got all these drug connections. So next thing, the shot caller in my buildings come up to me saying, hey, we read your story, we know about all your drug connections, you gotta start bringing drugs in for us. So I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm new to this. What do I say to these guys? I had no idea how to get myself out of this situation. I said, look, how am I gonna get anyone to bring the drugs in? Everybody was arrested with me. And then they were like, no, we know your girlfriend visits you three times a week. Tell her to bring it in. So I'm like, oh God, what am I gonna do? So I couldn't think of a proper solution so I just tried it to bide my time. I said to them, look, I'm going to run this by my girlfriend. I can't say anything on the phone. You know, the, the cops can listen to the phones. Let, let me run it by her and I'll get back to you on it. I was just, I was just hoping, you know, things would change over time because this was such a crazy place, this county jail, people coming in and out, constant fight, people getting moved. Anyway, the two shot callers in my building, the head of the whites was this guy called Carter he started bulldogging the blacks. The head of the blacks called him a punk ass bitch, white boy. They went into the cell on the stairs. This guy got smashed twice by the head of the blacks. And then the new, the other, his underling, the underboss, became the boss. His name was Gravedigger. And uh, he orchestrated a race riot. And he got moved out of my pod too. So both the guys who were sweating me to bring the drugs in because of their own mischief making, they got moved out of my pod and I never got sweated again after that. And over time, I learned to make alliances with the right people. That prison riot story is on my YouTube channel, What Happens in a Prison Riot. I'll put the link below this video actually, because it's a really good, long, brutal story about how, what happens with these neo-Nazis and um, how everything escalated into this huge race riot after Carter, the head of the whites, got smashed twice by the head of the blacks. He ran out of that guy's cell and Gravedigger made him go back in and fight him, fight that black guy again. The black guy smashed him again. Yeah, so he was uh, humbled very rapidly. All right, thank you for asking this question about what the gangs 
ask you to do, put work in, stuff like that, shot callers. Appreciate you following the channel. I appreciate you liking the video, uh, commenting, and I will keep putting more of these videos out there. Cheers from London. Take care out there.